Well, you know that atrial fibrillation is the most prevalent sustained cardiac arrhythmia that associates with uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. We know that the central nervous system plays an important role in the pathogenesis of AF. Chronic stimulation of the sympathetic system actually enhances the development of hypertensive heart disease, which then raises the pressure inside the left atrium and causes stretch of the pulmonary veins. But we also know that acute surges of adrenaline, such as you see with hypoxia in obstructive sleep apnea patients or hypoglycemia, can actually lash onto this primed sub substrate to precipitate AF. Uh, and we know that the initial episodes of AF are what we call staccato subtypes, so they're fast and short-lived, but eventually it becomes longer and legato subtype, which then leads to redevelopment and really modification of the substrate, uh, the left atrium, which then makes it difficult to revert back to sinus rhythm, and then you get sustained AF. Right, so this was a randomized uh, sham control trial where we recruited patients with a high risk to develop AF. They had to be 55 years or older, taking three or more antihypertensive drugs, including a diuretic. They had to be in sinus rhythm at randomization and with evidence uh, of hypertensive heart disease on the echocardiogram as well as an indication for coronary angiography. We excluded patients with renal impairment, those with significant valvular heart disease, or those with untreated thyroid disease. The primary endpoint was the first event of subclinical AF, which was diagnosed with an implantable loop recorder. And these primary events were then adjudicated by a cardiologist who was blinded to the randomization status of these patients. So the secondary endpoints was, uh, were office blood pressure at six months and cardiovascular death uh, during follow-up. Right, so after an average of three years follow-up, the cumulative incidence of our primary endpoint occurred significantly less uh, in patients who had RD compared to the sham group. Uh, we can see from the Kaplan-Meier that the graphs divert early during follow-up within the first year, and it remained uh, significant during the follow-up with a p-value of 0.01. So the incidence of our primary endpoint was reduced with 60%, and we needed to treat four patients to prevent one event of subclinical AF. We also discovered that although the blood pressure uh, was significantly lowered at six months in the RD group with a p-value of 0.03, uh, there was also a drop in the sham group, similar to the Simplicity 3 trial. Uh, this may have been due to the Hawthorne effect, you know, when people start taking their meds now more diligently to impress the investigator. Uh, so the superiority criteria regarding the blood pressure was met uh, with a more than five millimeter mercury difference between the two groups at six months, but this was not significant. Uh, serendipitously, we also discovered that cardiovascular death was also reduced in the RD group uh, with a significant value of 0.04. And this is really the first time that we see that RD can maybe also reduce cardiovascular death, just because we've now followed our people for longer uh, and not like the typical six months and then we stop the trial. Right, so we, we already know since 2012 that uh, when Poko Schwalif and his group showed that if you actually add RD to pulmonary venous isolation, that you reduce uh, the incidence of post-procedural AF. However, this was a small study uh, and people criticized the manner of the way it was conducted. So Jonathan Steinberg and his group recently, as you correctly pointed out, showed that in a larger sample of 300 patients, this is indeed true. If you add RD to PVI, that your incidence of post-procedure AF is significantly reduced. Our study did not use PVI at all. This was upstream treatment with RD in patients with hypertensive heart disease, and we showed that subclinical AF incidence is significantly reduced in this specific population. Right, so this is the first randomized control trial to test the hypothesis that upstream treatment with RD on its own can reduce subclinical AF. 
this was a single center study. Uh, so, you know, one should always be careful, to, you know, to extract clinical significance from a single center study. So obviously we'll need multi-center involvement in future trials. However, this study showed that not only does RD reduce subclinical AF, it also reduces fast AF, which tells us that it reduces sympathetic tone. Renal denervation reduces sympathetic tone. Uh, it also showed serendipitously that it can reduce cardiovascular death as well. So what's really exciting for us is the possibility of a study where we can actually compare RD on its own to RD plus PVI plus PVI alone, you know, in a randomized, sham controlled fashion to see if this is really true that RD, even if we, sh we show equipotence, you know, that would already make a major difference in the treatment of patients with paroxysmal AF and hypertensive heart disease.